just want to do a quick study. I'm trying to make it short, but I want to talk about uh, how to preach the gospel. Uh, do we use tracts? Uh, do we have to open up our mouths? Um, do we have to convert the person? Um, I just want to kind of cover some of these things and what are we supposed to preach? Um, so let's look at that. All right, so I have this first uh, scripture up. I'm going to try to use my notes so I can keep on schedule. Um, in Colossians 3, we'll start reading, put on the new self. This is what uh, new believers, Christians are supposed to do, put on the new self. If ye then, um, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. That's pretty un understandable and simple to understand. But the problem is, is too many people have their affections on the earth. Jesus told his disciples, lay, not, lay, uh, lay up your treasures in heaven, not here on the earth. And where, you, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So that's a lot of pastors, so-called pastors, try to use that for tithing. Tithing was never money. So there's no reason that a person should take 10% of their money and give it to a pastor. Nowhere in scripture does it teach that. And so they pervert the, those things and try to take your money and try to say, well, if, you, if your heart was where, uh, with God, you would give 10%. No, no, God doesn't want your money. Let's see what God wants. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ and God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, it's the appearing, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. This is referencing the appearing, and this is what we're supposed to be looking for, or what people call the rapture or catching away. All right. Mortify, therefore, your members, which are upon the earth. This is what he wants you to do. Mortify your members. He wants you to put on the new man, not the old man. So, uh, which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil, concupiscence, I'm not that good at pronouncing that, and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. See, God's wrath does not come on his children. He comes on the children of the devil, the world, the non-believers. So we will not be in the great tribulation or the time of Jacob's trouble or the wrath of God. We will not see that. All right. In the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. See? So we all were sinners. We've all fallen short of glory of God. But now ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filth, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. See, we're, we're, we're to put off the old man. This is what God wants. He doesn't want your 10%. These things matter. And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge. Huh? Knowledge is, comes from God. After the image of him that created him. See? Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor circumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God. See, we are God's elect. Only because we're in Christ, who is the elect of God. Holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. He didn't say above all these things, pay 10% to a building fund and pay an offering. <laughs> no, that's nowhere in here. That God doesn't care about that. Man does. That's earthly things. Those things are going to be burned up. All right. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Ah, so you should be reading daily. Let the word of Christ dwell in you. Teaching, you're supposed to be teaching the word. Admonishing one another in psalms, 
and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. All right. So I wanted you to get an idea of what God wants for us to put on the new man. Part of putting on that new man is pre preaching the gospel to people. All right, let's see what the next step is. Let me go, I'm trying to stay on this. And putting on the whole armor of God. What does it say in Ephesians 6 about putting on the whole armor of God? The whole armor of God. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Not our own might. Put on the whole armor of God. Not partial. Put on the whole armor. Don't just put on the helmet. That ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So if you don't have the whole armor of God, you won't be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So, can a Christian um, be deceived by Satan? If you don't have on the whole armor of God, <laughs> Can a Christian live in sin if you don't put on the whole armor of God? <laughs> For we wrestle, see, we're wrestling day in and day out, not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. The world is evil. The world is not the elect. Calvinists have it wrong. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, Take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. If you don't put on a whole armor, you haven't done all to stand. You will fall. All right? Stand, therefore. See, we in Christ are victorious. In Christ, we're victorious. And we stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. God's word is truth. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. How are we righteous? By our faith. And your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. This is what Christians fail to do. When you put it on the whole armor of God, you must be ready to preach the gospel to the world. If you aren't preaching the gospel, then you're not putting on a whole armor and you will fall to the wells of the devil. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So we're gonna talk about that. How do you take the, word, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God? You take the King James Bible with you. You take the scripture where you get Get God's word. You memorize the scripture and preach it to people. All right. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. See, praying always. Not just five times a day like the Muslims do. No, we pray always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and not all in, in public. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. We're supposed to look. So this is all part of putting on the whole arm of God. And don't forget this last two parts. And for me, this is Paul talking. And we're supposed to follow Paul. And for me that utterance may be given unto me. So utterance. You need the spoken word. A spoken word, statement, or vocal sound. Not a track utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly not pass out a track tracks do not save a soul to make known we are supposed to make known we're supposed to reveal to the people in the scripture the truth to make known the mystery of the gospel is a mystery to the lost world we are tasked with the responsibility of opening our mouth boldly and praying for utterance that it may be given to us so that we can make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in bonds ambassadors are representatives of Jesus Christ and you don't represent them quietly in bonds that there and I may speak boldly as I 
ought to speak. It's very clear. We need to speak boldly as we ought to. Shame on you if you're passing tracks and not speaking and saying, oh, I just let my light shine. Well, yes, our light is to shine. But who is the light? Jesus. Who is Jesus? The Word. And we're supposed to make known the mystery of the gospel of Jesus by preaching his word. All right. All right. And I just like to show you here. This is where some people might say, well, that's just Paul talking about what he might want to do. Well, Paul tells us first Corinthians, wherefore, I beseech you, be ye followers of me. He's beseeching you. I know we don't use those fancy words. Ask someone urgently and fervently to do something he's beseeching you be followers of him if he's doing it you should be doing it all right he didn't say it once he said it twice first corinthians 11 1 be ye followers of me even as i also am of christ so put on a whole armor of god by being an ambassador and preaching a gospel now you put that track down and you do what? What does the scripture say? So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You need to preach the word of God. Why is the word of God so important? Well, it's the power of God unto salvation. It's kind of off the, or the preaching of the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. It's kind of off my script, but I'll go to this because you have to see this. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. This is Romans 1.16. The gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Not repenteth, not baptized, not live a good life, not goes to church every day. No, not does the sacraments. No. God, uh, the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith, not from, you know, um, your intellect and someone going to seminary school. No, it's from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. So we preach the faith of Jesus Christ believe on Jesus Christ all right and let me get back on on script now this is a commandment from God I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick that's us we are quickened by the Holy Spirit he's gonna judge you what's he gonna judge you on you'll you'll see judge the quick and the dead at his appearing there's appearing again and his kingdom those, those are two separate events. This is the second coming, and this is what we call the catching away, or what some people call the rapture. All right, so we'll look at that again. Preach the word. This is what you're being judged on. If you're preaching the word, being instant in season. So, you know, hey, being instant when, it, when, when, it's, when you're called upon. But also out of season, you are to reprove. Let's look at what reprove is. Are we supposed to be politically correct? Hmm. Reprimand or censor. See? And no, don't do that. Don't be the childish. We reprove people. We are supposed to reprove, rebuke. These are the first things you're supposed to do when you preach. <laughs> Express sharp disapproval or criticism. Wow. That's not what's taught in these churches. They teach, um, what do they call it, apologetics. No, we don't apologize. <laughs> it's nothing to apologize for. This is serious business. People are dying and going to hell. And eventually we'll be in the lake of fire for eternity. No, we reprove, we rebuke. But how do we do it? We exhort them. We exhort them. What is exhort? strongly encourage or urge someone to do it with all long suffering we are constantly patiently suffering having or showing patience in spite of troubles they don't like you they're cursing at you they're mad at you 
You're doing it with all long suffering and doctrine. So it's not us that's telling them to do it. We're teaching it from the word of God. All right. This is what you're being judged on again. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. We're in that time. They don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to do a sound doctrine. But after their own lust, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Oh, so they want the teachers to tell them what they want to hear. Oh, Joel Osteen. Oh, yeah. Oh, he tells you. He's a motivational speaker. Yeah, he's a false teacher. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. You can't help that. That's what God prophesied is going to happen. It's going to happen. So we don't try to change that. Our job is to do what? Preach the word and be instant in season, out of season. And we know that these things are going to happen. So we don't take it personal. We have long suffering and just continue with the doctrine. But watch thou in all things. See, watch that. He's telling you beware. Endure the afflictions. Hey, they're coming. Endure them. Do the work of an evangelist. What does an evangelist do? He's, this is what you're supposed to be doing. See, this is not what's being preached in those churches because they don't want you to know that stuff. They want you to pay a tithe. Nowhere in scripture does it tell you to pay a tithe and tithe is never money. A person who seeks to convert others to the Christian faith, especially by public preaching. The Bible tells you to do that. So it's very clear. You as a Christian, if you're not doing it, you ought to be doing it. Shame on you. Do the work of an advantage. Make full proof of thy ministry. Are you making full proof of your ministry? Ministry is just a service. You don't have to. Ministry is not. If it has money to do with it, it's no longer ministry. It's a business. The work of vocation of a minister of a religion. Oh, that's, that's wrong. The period of tenure. Spiritual work of service for of any Christian. See, that's what ministry is. The angels ministered unto Jesus. They weren't making money. It was a service. So any service you do is your ministry. And you're supposed to make full proof of thy ministry. Because you're going to be judged by it. All right. For I am now ready to be offered. This is Paul. He's ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. Can you say that? I have finished my course. Can you say that? I have kept the faith. Can you say that? Henceforth, because he's done all of this, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Are you going to lose your crown of righteousness because you ha haven't done all this? See, people are going to lose rewards. I don't want to lose my rewards. Why should you live a good life? Even though you're not saved by your works? Because you will lose your rewards. You know, eternity is a lot longer than this time on earth. Say we live to 100 years. It says our life is but a vapor. A crown? You know, crowns are given to kings. We are, going, we are made kings and priests. Kings rule. I want to be a ruler. I don't want to lose my kingdom, my mansion. I want to rule under Christ. For eternity. Once you get to heaven, you don't get a chance to earn those rewards back. I never, I don't see that in scripture. If it is, please someone show it to me. This is your only chance. That's why you should live for Christ. You're supposed to live for heaven. Which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at the day, and not me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. That's what we're supposed to be looking for. His appearing. We're supposed to be looking for Jesus's appearing. All right. I love his appearing. I'm not supposed to be looking for the Antichrist or looking to save the whales or no. We're supposed to be looking for Christ. We're supposed to be preaching the gospel, looking to heaven, looking for his appearing. All right. Let's go on. All right. Where are we at? So we did Second Timothy. Let's go to Second Corinthians. Where am I at? All right, there we go. Still with the ambassadors. Um, let me start up here. 511. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. See, we know the terror of the Lord. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. We persuade men. So when we're out there and someone says, wow, you sound argumentative. Well, I'm trying to persuade this gentleman. But, but we are made manifest unto God. And I trust also... 
uh, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. See? So when we're persuading men and we're trying to reconcile men to Christ, we're in their conscience. For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but given, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that ye may have somewhat to answer them which uh, glory in appearance and not in heart. For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God, or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. We are doing, we are to live for others. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then were all dead, and that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. We have the choice to live for him. And that's why we should live for him. Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, and all things are of God, who have reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and have given to us the ministry of reconciliation. He gave us that ministry to do. All of us have a ministry, the ministry of reconciliation. You need to re reconcile people to Christ by preaching the gospel. It's a call on all men, not just a, a priest or a pastor. It's for every believer to wit the God I'm uh, sorry, to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. See, he's given it to us. We have the word. We need to preach that word. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. See, you can't avoid it. You are an ambassador for Christ. As though God did beseech you, there is beseech again, by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. We are made the righteousness of God in him. We aren't righteous. God makes us righteous. It's a free gift, not of works, lest any man should boast. All right, First Peter. Where are we at? One twelve. Let me look at one three. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. All right, unto whom it is revealed that not unto themselves. But unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. See? Being born again, not, this is 123, being born again, not of corruptible seed. That's what a tract is. It's a corruptible seed. See, it's not perfect. It's not inspired by God. You can have scripture in there, but scripture is to be preached. The lost world will be reading it like the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts 8 and won't understand it. Some man should guide them. See, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. We are to preach from the word. When Jesus was tempted, he said, it is written in scripture. It is written. He quoted scripture. He didn't quote a tract. A tract or pass out a tract. Passing out tracts does not do anything. It keeps you from preaching. It's a trick from Satan to keep you from preaching. You're losing your rewards. You're going to lose your crown passing out tracts. You need to be an ambassador and boldly preach the gospel. All right, for all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man is as the flower of grass. 
the grass withereth and the flower therefore falleth away but the word of the Lord endureth forever this is the everlasting truth and this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you preached preached you can't get around it we are to be preachers of the word all right look at the uh, did we look at this already first corinthians 2 6 how be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect yet not the wisdom of this world this is how we preach we don't speak wisdom of this world nor of the promises of this world we don't promise uh, i'm sorry nor of the princes of this world we don't promise them this world but we don't follow the spiritual princes of this world they come to naught see but we speak the wisdom of god in a mystery even the hidden wisdom which god ordained before the world unto glory which none of the princes of this world knew for had they known it they would not have crucified the lord of glory that's why he speaks in such a mystery that's why it's hard to understand the scripture because remember we have an adversary the devil out there he reads the bible too and so god knows so those sheep will hear his voice the devil won't remember jesus spoke many times in parables he spoke openly everything he said was in open when he, whenever he taught and, and uh, preached, he did it openly, nothing in private. So he spoke in parables. He spoke in a mystery. And so uh, we have to unravel that mystery. That's our job. All right, 13. Which things also we speak, not in words. Let me, uh, let me not skip over this. Let me go to 9. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard need to have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Oh, you hear pastors say that all the time. This, You see this is referencing to the fact that the word of God is, is written and spoken in a mystery so, to, so that the princes of this world won't know. And that's why it's quoting the scripture, I have not seen nor ear heard, and neither entered into the heart of man. See? Because God had didn't reveal his word yet until he revealed Jesus. See? So this is not saying we don't know what's, what God has got for us in heaven. They, they misquote. When you go to a, a, a business, they're going to make merchandise of you is what the scripture says. And they're doing a great job of it because people go away from the truth and have itching ears. And heap to them teachers that will tell them what they want them to hear. But they, do, they don't say this verse, but God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. Ah, so it's not a mystery. For the spirit search of all things, yea, the deep things of God. See, we have the Holy Spirit. We need that no man teach us. We don't need a pastor. We have the Holy Spirit. We have the comforter. We have, we have uh, God in us. We need that no man teach us. All men are liars. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. See, no man knows, but it's the spirit of God. So how are you going to get revelation of God? Read his word. Pray to God for understanding. The spirit of God will open up your eyes. Now we have received not the spirit of the world. See, atheists get it wrong. I mean, uh, Calvinists get it wrong. We don't have the spirit of the world. The world is not the elect. But the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us by God, of God. Which things also we speak. See, we speak those things. <laughs> speak, not pass out tracts. <laughs> Not in words which man's wisdom teacheth. See, oh, you got to go to a seminary and learn how to uh, do apologetics and speak in wisdom of men's words. No, no. All you need is the truth of God's word. God's word to speak to the heart. But which the Holy Ghost teacheth. See, we need the Holy Ghost to teach us. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. See, they compare earthly things. 
See, the Holy Ghost is the only one who can teach spiritual things because only the Holy Ghost uh, knoweth God. All right? But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. See, so natural man is the person, when you're not born again, you're of nature, you're natural, you're of, of Adam. So that's why passing out the track doesn't work because a natural man doesn't even understand the, the scripture that's quoted in there. Most of these tracks don't even use the King James Bible. They use what's called the New King James or the NIV or some of these other translations. And even if it was a New King, I mean, even if it was a King James only, they do not understand because a natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. They won't understand it. They need you to preach to them. For they are foolishness unto him. When he looks at that as foolishness unto them. Neither can he know them. Why? Because they are spiritually discerned. It's impossible. Oh, let me do discern. There you go. Oh, perceive or recognize. They cannot perceive or recognize. They, it's hard to understand. They need a new translation. <laughs> yeah, they can't. They need someone to guide them. But he that is spiritual judge of all things, yet he himself is judge of no man. I mean, I need, let me go to, I got to go off the script again. You have to see what this says. And then you'll get a better understanding. Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem uh, unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia. This was a black man from Ethiopia. This was not a Jew. <laughs> you got Les Feldick and these people that just don't believe God's word. They say they do, but they change it. He's a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians. If he's under her and she's the queen, he's an Ethiopian. This was not a non-Jew. This man was a Greek Daddy. or a Gentile. Okay, let me finish, Car. And uh, he was actually the first non-Jew uh, to be saved in the church age. All right. And this was Philip, not Peter that did this. So Peter's uh, um, uh, revelation came later, and, and that's why God was revealing to him that he was going to do a work with the, with the Gentiles. All right. Who hath the charge of all her treasure, and had come to worship for to, um, had come to worship for to, uh, to Jerusalem for to worship. See, they had to go to Jerusalem to worship. There's only one temple, and so he had to come far to worship. And he was, a, he was, I believe, he, he was a believer. He just wasn't in the church. This is a transition from the dispensation and the doctrine now going into the church here. So this gentleman was actually already saved. Now he's just transitioning into being born again. All right. Was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah, and, and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I except some man should guide me? See, he didn't get the revelation. He only had the Old Testament. He didn't have the revelation of who Jesus truly was. He needed some man to guide him, explain the mystery of the gospel. And he desired Philip that he would come and sit with him. The place of the scripture uh, which he read was this. He was led as a sheep of, to the slaughter, and like a, dumb, like a lamb dumb before his shear, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation, for his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee of whom speak of the, uh, the prophet this, of himself? Or some other man. Then Philip opened his mouth, opened his mouth. See, we're supposed to preach, not in a track. I say, read this, or a book, bestseller book. Get out of here. No, you open your mouth and begin at the same scripture. You read the scripture. You, your doctrine comes from scripture. The word of God speaks to the heart. And then what do you do? You preach and preach unto him, Jesus. Ah. And as they went on their way, 
they came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And what did Philip say? And Philip said, If thou believest. And I say, if you join our church, if you get baptized, if you repent of your sins. No, it doesn't say that. No one in scripture does say, repent of your sins. So people make up this stuff, and the devil is subtle, and they're used by the devil. And Philip said, If thou believest what all, well, with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Say, with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. See, you must believe on the Lord Jesus. There it is. All right, and he commanded that the chariot, uh, and he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both in the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. So, um, again, they were still under the Jewish traditions. Um, they were supposed to baptize under the Jewish traditions. Paul was not to be baptizing. He said, "I came not to baptize, but to preach." So the revelation of Paul hasn't come yet. This is only in Acts 8. Paul gets converted in the next chapter. So they were still baptizing. But again, that had nothing to do with salvation. That was just a Jewish sign. This, the Jews seek after, uh, Greeks seek after wisdom, and Jews look, seek after a sign. Or how does it work? Uh, Jews seek after, uh, Greeks seek after wisdom, and Jews look for a sign, basically. So. Uh, that's why they had the signs of speaking in tongues and the signs of baptism and those kind of things. All right. So uh, now let me go back to where was it? Where was I going next? Uh, okay. Um, did we look at First Corinthians? Yep. First Peter. All right. I think we kind of looked at that. Twenty-three. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth in the Bible forever. So the word of God is incorruptible, all right? James 1, 2. Wherefore I lay apart all filthiness and superficiality of naughtiness and receive the meekness, the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. See? Not attract. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Hearers deceiving your own selves. All right? For if you bear... If you, if any of you be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in the glass. So we should live the word, not just be a hearer only, but we need to hear it first. For he beholdeth himself and goeth to his way and straightway forgotten what manner of man he was. For whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth there, he being not uh, a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. See, there's a blessing that occurs when you live a good life. We we'll keep our rewards because God has already rewarded you. He gives gifts unto men. So he gives you a gift already, but you can lose that gift and you can lose your blessing. If any man among you seem to be religious and bright of not his tongue, but deceiving his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Ah. Yeah, it's a lot of those people. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Oh, from the world. The world is not the elect. All right, that's getting off the subject. Um, all right, parable of the sower. All right, let's look at that real quick. Uh, and when much people were gathered together and were come to him out of every city, he spake by a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell by the wayside and it was trodden down and the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell upon the rock. And as soon as it were sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture and some fell among thorns and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it and other fell on the ground on a good ground and sprang up and bear fruit and uh, an hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried 
he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. There you go. Speaking in a parable. And he said, did it uh, publicly. See, Not everyone's going to understand that. And his disciples asked him, saying, what might this parable be? See, they had to ask. They didn't have ears, ears to hear either. Uh, they eventually got them later on. So Jesus always explained it to his disciples. And he said unto you, it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. See, God has to reveal it to you. This is Jesus revealing what the mystery is. You're not going to get it by asking someone else. You got to go to the source. And it's giving unto us to know that, but we have to ask for it. But to others in parables that seeing they might not see and hearing they may not understand they're not going to understand the scripture they can see it they can hear it they can hear a sermon they won't understand you have to what does it say open your mouth boldly you got to uh, reveal the mystery of the gospel just just even quoting scripture you have to preach you quote from the scripture but you teach the doctrine of the scripture and you reveal the unravel the mystery because they won't understand. You have to preach with all long suffering, remember. But you have to reprove and rebuke first. All right. Now, the parable is this the seed is the word of God. Ah. How many pastors say, oh, plant a seed, and they talk about money? Nowhere in scripture is money a seed. You see how they make merchandise of you? No. The seed is the word of God. That's so, so wrong. God went in there and overturned the money changers tables because he said, my father's house, a house of prayer. And people are falling for that. No, the seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear. Then come, come of the devil and take away the word out of their ears, lest they should believe and be saved. You see that? He doesn't want the person to be saved. So those that are by the wayside, they're not. They're, they're not they're, they're not on the good ground and so the devil's going to take it away unless they hear and be saved because the, the closer they get the more questions they ask they'll come to a saving faith the devil doesn't want that because the word is it's the word of god it's the power of god under salvation the preaching of the gospel all right you must do the work of the preaching all right how can a man, how can I understand lest man, some man should guide me? All right. They on the rock are they which when they hear receive the word with joy. And these have no root, which for a while believe and in time of temptation fall away. See? So, yeah, for a while they believe, but they believe from the head it's, they you know or you know it's not a heart belief because it takes no root it's not rooted in their heart they may believe with their they, they believe the words see when they hear to the, receive the word with joy the words but it took no root in their heart so they got a lot of head knowledge but when temptation fall and comes they fall away they never truly believe with their heart and that which fell among thorns are they which when they he have heard go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life. Oh, that's too many people because the world has got you worrying about money and bring no fruit to perfection. But that on the good ground, that's your heart, are they which in an honest and good heart having heard the word, keep it. See, it's in their heart. That's the difference of all of these. And they kept it and bring forth fruit with patience. How do you keep it? You receive it. Receiving is believing, all right? That's how you keep it. What must a man do to be saved? One second, Car. I'm huh? almost done. Yeah. I'm almost done. You're doing good. Yeah, I eat popcorn. Okay. All right. John 1, 12. But as many as received him. That's Jesus. 
See? To them gave he power. The people that received him to them to become the sons of God. That's how you inherit the kingdom. You can only inherit some uh, something by being a son or daughter, being a child of. It's an inheritance. You won't inherit the kingdom unless you are the son of God. That's a powerful thing to be. To them, even to them that believe on his name. So that's what receive means. It means to believe. Undamaged level in the same plane or line. See? So believe, receive. That's how a person gets saved. They believe and receive the gospel. That's it. What does Acts 12 say? Uh, is it 12? No, 16, sorry. 16.30. All right. But Paul cried. Now Paul is preaching, but Paul cried. And he didn't get his full re revelation yet. Uh, he just started preaching right away because, hey, God converted him. But Paul cried with a loud voice saying, do thyself no harm. It was, and he's in jail and he was uh, being let out and the jailer was going to kill himself. Paul said, do thyself no harm for we are all here. They didn't leave. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas. See? By the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established, right? Two or three witnesses, let every word. Now, what happens next? This is established word of God. And brought them out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? This is the most direct verse you can get about salvation. What must I do to be saved? That's the question you should be asking. That's the question that we uh, offer people, hey, what must you do to get into heaven? Why should God let you in heaven? What must I do to be saved? And they said, they said, at the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. And they said, believe. And then say, repent from your sins. It says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. See? Jesus, not Yeshua. J-E-S-U-S. -S, not Jesus Christos. Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ. There's only one name given amongst men whereby we must be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord. They spake. They didn't give him a Bible and say, read this. They spake unto him the word of the Lord. And to all that were in the house, the house, the house, that's where the church is, it's in the house. And what happened? And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized. He and all his straightway. Again, Paul just began. He was still under the Jewish traditions. He's Jewish. He didn't understand yet uh, what his uh, what his revelation from God is yet. But he got a chance to sit with God and, and get that revelation. And then that's when he started his full time uh, ministry uh, to the Gentile nation. And when he had brought them out into his house, he set meat before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. So it is very clear what scripture is saying over and over again, how a person gets to that believing in God by the preaching of the word of God from the uh, preacher that God sends. All right. All right. We're almost done. We're almost done. Uh, we looked at the parables. Yep. We're almost done, Car. And then we'll read the Bible as a fan. You ready to read your Bible, Car? Yep. Okay. All right. First Corinthians 3, 5. Who then is Paul? And who is Apollos? But ministers by whom you believed. See? That's all. That's all we are. Ministers by whom you believe. They were, they were arguing. It was a division. I'm of Paul. I'm of Apollos. No, who is it? No, we're just ministers by who you believed. Even as the Lord gave to every man. See that? I have planted. Apollos watered. That's the seed. But God gave the increase. 
So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. We're just supposed to plant. We're just supposed to water it. And God will give an increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. You're rewarded based on your preaching. The devil doesn't want you to win rewards. He can't get your soul. But he can sure enough mess up your eternal uh, happiness. Because there will be crying in heaven until God wipes away the tears. Yeah. All right, Carl. We're almost done. For we are laborers together with God. All right. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. We are the temple of God. We are the church. You don't need to go to a building fund. Get out of here. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed now, uh, heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay that is laid, which is Christ, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. See, God's going to burn everything with fire. And the fire, fire. Yeah. And the fire shall try every man's work mm. of what sort it is. Well, no, if it's spiritual or not. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. See? If any man's... So if you're building... Uh, uh, you, if you're building a spiritual building of people and foundation of, of people that you're preaching the gospel to, your land seed, it's spiritual. Hey, you're going to receive your reward. If any man's work shall be burned... He shall suffer loss. If you're giving money to a building, a church fund, then you're, you're going to suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Yeah, you'll be saved, but you're going to have loss. <laughs> know ye not that ye are the temple of God. See, ye are the temple of God. Don't go to a place on Sundays. Please, that's not the temple of God. And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Don't say, hey, we got to have a worship service and bring the spirit in here or something. Set the atmosphere. Get out of here. That's a bunch of malarkey. It's business. They're making merchandise of you. If any, <coughs> if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. Why should you not live in sin? God will destroy you. He will kill you. He will take you out of this world. Take you to heaven quick. For the temple of God is holy. Which temple ye are? Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seem to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. All they care about is the vanity, the money, the cars. It's empty, it's nothing. Has, has, has no point to it. it. Has no purpose. Therefore let a man glory in me. I mean, I'm sorry. Therefore let no man glory in men. For all things are yours. Whether Paul or Paulus or uh, Cephas. Or the world or life or death. Or things present or things to come. All are yours. And ye are Christ. And Christ is God's. Alright. Alright, we looked at that. We're almost done, guys. Uh, yeah, I know. We're almost there. I sound like one of them I'm going to preach. All right, the apostle said unto the Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, if ye had faith as a grain of a mustard seed, ye might say unto this sycamore tree, be thou plucked up by the roots and be thou planted in the sea of it. Uh, and it shall should obey you. Mustard seed. Huh? Where else did he use that mustard seed? Um, is this it? For Christ sent me. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, he um, referenced the kingdom of God as a mustard seed as well. So that's why the your, your face needs to be like the mustard seed. All right. Because the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. All right. And this is where we'll end right here. 
this is what Paul says, for Christ sent me not to baptize. You see that? Baptism is not required. It's not something that we as Christians should be doing. Um, there's only one Lord, one faith, one baptism, right? That, that verse means something. That baptism is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This water baptism stuff, this ritualistic stuff is something that the business does so that you will have to go there. That baptism stuff, Christ sent Paul not to baptize, and we're supposed to be followers of him, so we should not be baptizing. Christ, for Christ sent me not to baptize, but to what? Preach the gospel. You won't hear that preached in churches, and if they do, they're gonna, they're gonna um, convert, uh, they're gonna twist it around. Here, let me see what that is, Car. Okay, thanks. Our, okay, for Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Okay. Um, paper. This is my last verse right here, okay? For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of non effect. Oh, man. That was, oh, that was a great sermon. Oh, he preached that word. Uh, that's what it is wisdom of words. Oh, they love that attention. No. Just preach from the scripture, just read his word and, and expound upon it, explain it. Explain the doctrine, the teachings of God's word, not your own uh, church doctrine or uh, denomination. And that's that's of the devil. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. How many times can I show you in scripture? The preaching of the cross is the power of God. That's how someone, not your testimony. You need to preach the power of God. Your testimony is not God. The word of God is God. And you need to preach the testimony of Jesus Christ. I mean, he died. Have you had someone in your family or close die? Are they still dead? They didn't rise again. Only Jesus did. He's the only begotten of the Father. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Have not God made the foolish the wisdom of this world? I'm sorry, have not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? This wisdom is foolish. They say evolution. That is foolish. It doesn't make sense. No evidence. We look at the same evidence. And they say, well, this is evolution. We say it's creation. We'll see who's right. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. See, Let's go to all these schools and get all this education. And they're teaching Antichrist because the spirit of Antichrist is already here. See? It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. I don't know how many times you got to see this in scripture before you realize passing out tracts does not save a soul. Passing out Bibles, uh, giving money, passing out food. You need to preach the gospel because that's the power of God. And that's the that's how God has chosen the foolishness of preaching to save them. that believe what you preach and it must be Jesus Christ. For the Jews require a sign. That's what I was trying to quote. The Jews require a sign. The Greeks seek after wisdom. That's why they did the signs. The b baptism. That's why the tongues was a sign. To the Jews. It was nothing but Jews on the day of Pentecost there. Of every nation. Jews. Devout men. See. And the Greeks seek after wisdom. Oh we love going to seminaries. And hearing what the. Bible scholar says, man, get out of here. That's wisdom of men. But we preach Christ crucified. You can't get around it. If you listen to this this far, you've heard preach Christ, preach the gospel, power of God. So you, you are without excuse. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. 
and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men are uh, uh, after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty and base things of the world. And things which are despised have God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Hey Amen. I hope you learned something from this. If you have any questions, let me know. I would love to have a conversation over the phone so we can look, look at this in scripture. We'll record it and make it public. God bless. Good night.